Deputy Director of International Relations in the Technological University of the Shannon here and I'm based in Athlone campus. So I'm delighted to see um, some of our friends and our partners from around the world join our webinar series um, today. I'm delighted to be joined by my colleagues, uh, Luke Fannin and Bernard uh, Sui Tao, uh, who are both leading academics here in TUS in Athlone. So I'm just going to formally um, just let you know that this session will be recorded. So if some of you need to leave early, don't worry, all of the content will be covered and we can share the recording with you after uh, this session today. Um, just we would like you to be interactive and engage with us. So if you have any questions, please put them into the chat box. Um, and also we'll have time at the very end for a question and answer session, so Q&A. So if you want to ask questions, please turn on your uh, camera, put on your microphone, ask some questions because, uh, you know, we're here to share our knowledge and our experience with you and we want you to engage in this session as well. So I'm going to pass you on to the guys. So thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. Good morning, all. Uh, welcome to attend this TUS International Webinar. My name is Bernard and I'm a lecturer here in TUS Athlone Accounting and Business Computing Department. And I have my colleague Luke Fanner here with me. Two of us are going to introduce introduce uh, some of some of our accounting course. Okay. First of all, I would like to provide you with some background information about our uni university and Ireland. We are Technological University of Shannon, and our name comes from the River Shannon, which is the longest which is the longest river here in Ireland, al along which our campuses are based. We are the first cross-regional technological university. We currently have 15,000 students, 3,000 experienced staff, and our students are from over 100 different countries. We have more than 250 global partnerships. Here in TUS, we have six campuses, which in Athlone, Moylish, Limerick School, Ar School of Arts and Design, Turles, Clamel, and Ennis. Transcending geographic, TUS, TUS is Ireland's first cross-regional university. The new networked university is linked by the River Shannon and bordered borders almost half of Ireland's 26 counties, providing unprecedented access, level access to higher education. This is a transfor transformative change for the accessibility and one that we are so proud of. I want to talk about Ireland as well, okay? And uh, like before I, I came to Ireland uh, since 2004 and so many people ask me where is Ireland? I got so many questions like that. I want to emphasize Ireland is the European hub to over 1000 leading multinational companies. Companies who require a skilled, educated and highly capable workforce to drive their success choose to locate in Ireland. Over 1000 foreign direct investment joints in the ICT, social media, pharmaceutical, finance have made Ireland the hub of their European operations. With big names such as Google, HP, Apple, IBM, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pfizer, GSK, and I want to highlight that none out of the top 10 global ICT companies are based in Ireland. Eight of Eight out of top 10 gaming companies have offices in Ireland. Eight out of top 10 global pharmaceutical companies have offices and manufacture or manufacturer facilities in Ireland. Six out of top seven diagnostic companies have operations in Ireland. 15 out of the top 20 medical device companies have operations in Ireland. 50% of the world leading financial firms have offices in Ireland. Okay, I'm just going to mute all everybody. Okay, apart from strong foreign owned multinational sector, Ireland also have vibrant indigenous industries. 
companies competing on the world stage, including CRH, DCC, Greencore, Kingspan, NTR, and Party Power. Okay, and Ireland is an English-speaking country, and is world recognized. Ireland is recognized on the world stage for its excellence in education. Ireland is also a member of European Union, and it is top three country worldwide for safety. I want to emphasize, I certainly benefited from this myself. Graduates, okay, graduates, Ireland third level institution graduates have 12, 24 months post-study work permits. Okay, I, for ACCA students or for accounting students, I got 36 months of post-study work permits, which allow me to become a fully qualified accountant. And also during school years, during school years, students are allowed to work 20 hours per week, okay? And they can work 40 hours per week during the holidays. Now, students of TUS gain invaluable knowledge and expertise through industry relevant and live projects, ensuring our students uh, obtain a obtain a relevant qualification and will benefit them in the future. This emphasis on the applied learning is a key characteristic of TUS and means that learner will be career ready. TUS also a member of the Run EU network, which we provide researchers with opportunities to collaborate at European scale. We have partner universities in uh, eight partner universities now, in fact, in different countries across Europe. Before we start talking about the master in accounting, in accounting course, I want to introduce this course, Bachelor of Arts in Accounting with Finance. It's a level eight degree course. Both in here, both here in Athlone and in our Limerick, we offer this course. This course is a level eight level eight uh, accounting course, students can choose to either three or four years, depends whether they want to do a placement year or not. On the successful, on the completion of this course, students get maximum exemptions from professional bodies. We're currently reapplying for the exemptions, okay, and we expect we will maintain our maximum exemptions. And our course has a very good reputation here in Ireland and is regarded as one of the top accounting degree course in the country. Recently, our course, our degree course, won the award for excellence in education and training at the Irish Accountancy Award. And we have here in TU, sorry, excuse me, here in TUS, in TUS at Long Campus, our course minimum, you can do three years to obtain your level eight degree. Here are the same modules we cover during those three years, okay? And if you're interested, if you have any questions on them, I'm more than happy to stay and answer your questions, okay? Here's a photo from the Accountancy Award Night. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there, but my colleagues looks really good in their talks. Okay, now I'm going to hand over to my colleague, the program lead of our Master in Accounting program, Mr. Luke Fannin. Thanks, Bernard. Hi, everyone. My name is Luke, and uh, thank you all for attending. And I'm just looking at the chat box here. We have students from China. Thanks, Amy and Cynthia uh, from China, Manuel from Nigeria. If there's anyone else from a different country, I'd love to know. Uh, it, uh, because we, it brings so much to the class when we have students from different countries and we look forward to international students attending to us, attending our accounting lectures and uh, adding to the class. So, Thanks. So I actually taught Bernard when he came from to Ireland and back in 2004. He was a young, fresh-faced student 
still quite young. I'm Sorry, Luke probably has some uh, connection issues there. Now, uh, can you see Luke, me now? Yeah, perfect. OK, sorry. So our, our graduates from our B in accounting, so I'm going to talk about the masters in accounting. And you, you're here to, I suppose, find out about the masters in accounting, accounting or how to be an accountant in Ireland. and. To become an accountant in Ireland, you have to do the professional accounting exams and get experience. So the fast track, or the quickest way to become an accountant is to do your professional exams as quickly as possible. So we facilitate that as well as getting your degree or getting your master's in accounting, you get excellent <laughs> exemption. So here we have the master's in accounting and we have eight out of nine exemptions for ACCA, the full cap two exemptions for chartered, which means the stage two exemptions. So in chartered, there are three stages. Our degree in accounting gets exempt from the first stage. The master's in accounting gets exempt from the second stage, cap two, and then you're left to do the finals. And the same with ACCA. When you get exempt from eight out of nine, you're just left with one exam and then your final exams to do. So you you really come out of the degree of their masters with a, a head start and you're very attractive to employers because you have those exemptions. We are currently applying to to get reaccreditation for the masters uh, in uh, with ACCA. So we have retained our exemptions for chartered. They've retained the same and we expect the same with ACCA. So. Why study the masters in accounting? Why become an accountant? So we have here a well-paid and secure career, and most of our students secure employment prior to graduation. And we're going to talk about that. We we help you get employed as part of the masters. It's very practical in the masters. You join in September. The start date is usually mid-September. The date, exact date, will be announced, but straight away from September, we're encouraging people to do up their CVs, where in October, we run mock interviews. I think that's one of the, the slides we're going to talk about here, and uh, where we uh, have a, one of the HR managers from a local accounting firm come in with us, and we give interviews in the same style as the graduate interviews process that you'd undertake with Ernest and Young or the big the big four EY Deloitte and many of our students because the, the, the big four the big accounting practices there Deloitte PwC EY then the the mid-tier Grant Thornton another big international practice we have RBK a local Irish practice in Athlone but it's one of the bigger practices in Ireland a lot of the accounting practices they have graduate recruitment in October. So you'll be joining in September. We'll be getting you doing up your CVs. We'll be giving you mock interviews. We'll be getting you ready for the, the graduate recruitment, which means that many of our students have employment got before they finish their master's. So they'll, they'll do, go through the interview process, get called back, and then they'll get an offer subject to achieving a 2-1 or a 2-2, whatever grade, uh, in their degree or their master's. Lots of opportunities for accountants. So we talk about practice, which is public practice, where you do the audit for companies or you do their accounts. So you, you're working in a professional practice with other accountants and your job, you have lots of different clients and you build the clients for the work that you do. Another avenue for our graduates is to go and work for companies as financial accountants there, maybe management accountants, uh, and you're working probably in financial control for those companies. And uh, then, of course, with financial services, go to, to go to banking or fund accounting. It's a good time. It's a good time to come to Ireland to study accounting because there's a lot of jobs out there. The, 
you start uh, typically in the mid 20s, 20, 20,000 to 30,000 would be the range of pay for a graduate that's joining a firm or a, a company. And you went, usually enter into a contract. So on, on finishing the master's or, or the Bachelor of Arts in Accounting, and if you start a job, it's usually for a three-year contract. The company would pay for your exams. The company often pay for your exemptions as well, which can be quite costly. And they'll, you'll get study leave to go and study for the exams. So it's, it's a very defined route. Once you come to TUS to study, you may either for the Bachelor of Arts in Accounting and you may go on and do the Masters or you may come straight into the Masters depending on uh, what stage you are at in your studies. You come, you do your study for one year, then you hopefully have a job lined up or you get a job soon after and then you're looking at a three-year contract and once you're Money. Yeah, employed as an accountant, you'll get that work visa for that, as Bernard said, that 36 month period, which will allow you to get your three years experience and you'll have finished your exams and then you will be a qualified accountant. And that's where we want our students to be. And many of our students uh, are qualified in uh, the three year period because they'll have finished their exams and got their experience. Sorry, look, so, can I just... Uh... Can I just uh, add a point there? This is the diagram. This is the pay uh, to our research we identified from a website called job.ie. So highlighting three professions uh, pay level. For accountant, it's the, I, I believe accountant is the blue line there. And for accountant, pay is depends on the post-qualified experience. So what we found is the pay uh, has been increased over the over the last few years to accountant and the starting salary is probably around 24 25 and then after they are fully qualified which could be as quick as three years time their pay will increase to 40 around 40 thousand euros and then as they gain more practical experience, their pay will increase to 50, 70. So the point we're trying to make here, myself and Luke, is that accountant is regarded as a high paid job and secure job in Ireland. And if you can manage, which I believe most students could, pass the professional exams, secure yourself a position. So the future is very bright. The future is very bright. And you can take that qualification anywhere with you. Some of my friends went to Luxembourg, working there at Fund Accountant, and some of other my friends went to uh, Mid East, okay, working there for multinational companies, and a couple of my friends spent three or four years in Australia, and after you obtain the master degree and become fully qualified, you have that freedom. Okay, sorry for the interruption there. Look, I hand this back to you. Thanks, Bernard. You can go on to the next slide maybe. So here are some of the opportunities in the region and there's some of the in financial and professional services. And Athlone, as Bernard said, is in the middle of Ireland. So Ireland is quite small. You're in Athlone, you're an hour away from the west coast and an hour and a bit, an hour, less than two hours away from the east and west coast. You're in the middle. You'll get to Dublin in an hour and a half. You'll get to Galway in about an hour, the two big cities either side. Uh, of Athlone, and that's where a lot of the jobs are. Uh, we've had some students get jobs in Cork, uh, one of our Indian students, Steve, last year I was working in Cork, some of the uh, international students are in Limerick, so they're, they're starting to move around to different cities around, around Ireland, which is great. Uh, so here are some of the, the industries in the region where we have students working in Ericsson's, uh, we have students in Lily, the, a lot, most of our graduates go in the professional services in the accounting route and get jobs in practices and then a lot of smaller practices. Um, Anjali, she was studying with us three years ago, I think, from India. She's working in Roscommon in a practice, Bernard in Castle Ree, uh, dealing with a lot of farmer accounts, I would say, small and small businesses. And she's getting on really well. And I spoke to the partner there, uh, Gary Green. I met him two weeks ago 
and he's delighted with Angelia and said he would take two more of her if he could, you know. So our our, our students are our best ambassadors, our graduates are our best ambassadors. So it, they make the way easier for any further international students coming in because they do well. And here our current crop of master's students, most of them, this year we had 16 students on the master's. So most of us, I think 14 of us went up, 14 of the students went up to Dublin uh, two or three weeks ago to the chartered accountants headquarters for a day for master's students around Ireland. And that's Trinity in the background there. We visited Trinity College as well. It was a, a nice day out and the students got to meet other master's students and they got to meet the, the chartered accounting body society. And it was a, an interesting day for them. And we do try and bring students out to events, particularly the master's students. You're, you're a smaller group. You're, uh, and we're trying to get them networking and used to meeting other people in professional environment and how to present themselves and talk. So this was another event, the RBK, the local accounting practice, and they employ quite a few of our graduates every year, RBK. So that's a, a practice, an accounting practice in Atlone that will take you on and you do your three years there and you become an expert in tax or accounting or audit. Uh, and uh, the, the main aim for anyone with this the presentation, I think, is how do I become an accountant? So you do the mass, if it's the masters you're here for, you do the masters, it'll take one year uh, from September to September. You have a job lined up that you start after that. And then in three years, you will have, you, you should have only your final exams to do, maybe one for ACCA and one tax exam. And I know that some of our Indian students who had done chartered exams in India got exempt from ACCA tax, that remaining tax exam. So a lot of you will be at, will be in the position just to do your finals uh, for ACCA, which is great. The course for the masters is one year. There are three semesters. It says well, there's two taught semesters, and then you have the months, the summer months. So really, the third semester there is the summer months, June, July, and August, for you to work on your research project, which is a thesis where you pick an accounting topic and you do research on that and you work on that. Uh, we'll have scaffolded you up, we'll have given you support up until June, and then you go off and finish your, your research over the months of June, July, and August. Uh, there are exams at the end of each semester, and you come out of it with 90 credits. On the exams, the standard is quite high because you're getting a valuable exemptions from the professional bodies, so, so you're, you're going to have to as we say here, it's full-time commitment. So I, I really have to emphasize that students are expected to come to class, you're expected to attend and, and work outside of class to do the, to do the questions yourselves. It's uh, a very practical way of teaching in that students are given questions, they work on themselves, they come in then and we, we, we discuss uh, any questions students have or any issues and students are encouraged to interact in the masters. So each semester, you a semester lasts approximately four months. The first one goes from September, ends in December, and your exams are in December. And you will have three subjects, and those subjects or modules finish then. And then in January, you take on, so the first semester, these are our three financial reporting and corporate governance, strategy, which is financial management, uh, cost of capital, uh, funding for a company, and then auditing, which many will have done and some will, will have not. But they're the three main modules. They finish then, and then in the second semester, which runs from January to May, you do these some subjects, which are management accounting, taxation, and then an integrated case studies, which combines all the modules into a case study type uh, module, which brings your knowledge together and students really find this beneficial. We have built presentations into the modules. There are team uh, assignments where you work in teams. You can also get a chance to work individually. So you get a lot of opportunities to develop as a person in the masters. And the last thing then is the research. And here is Anand, and I think Anand is joining us today. I'm not sure if he's here yet, but 
Uh, yeah, I see him the there, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is Anand's testimonial. He was here, he graduated last year and is working now for a company um, out of Maine. And Anand, I don't know if you've got a microphone there. It'd be great to get you in if you were there. Hi, Luke. You... Thanks for the invite. Thanks, Anand. Good to see Good to talk to you. Hi, Anand. Thanks How are you? Yeah, good, good, good. Patel. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. No, it's no, it's, <laughs> it's my pleasure to join. And then maybe if you could just perhaps, uh, you you did the masters, I suppose you started in 2000, September 2021, did the yeah. the the and then graduated the following year in in November 22, finished in September from graduation November, and you're working now for a company. And maybe if you just tell students how you found the masters, uh, how you found the study, and combine work and study, and how you're like living in Ireland now and working. Uh, uh, regarding sharing my experience, I think I was pretty doubtful before joining a particular course in TUS in Ireland, because being an Indian student, I was like doubtful whether, uh, especially the English which is which is spoken there, will I be able to understand it, or uh, will the lectures be good? Will the college be good? Will there be any activities which will help me to increase my learning experience? I was really doubtful, to be frank, but. When the at the moment I started, uh, uh, you know, working on the uh, working with the, uh, especially with the colleagues, uh, especially my classmates, and especially the lectures were really good, including all the lectures. And the th the best thing which I feel is that the. We've lost him just at the best bit. He's lost on and yeah. just about to get okay. into the best bits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we just wait. We might wait a few moments to see if we can reconnect. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, uh, there was a connection issue. I think you yeah. were just going to tell us the best yeah. bit. Yeah. And uh, so actually, uh, when the course started, especially in the first sem, I remember. Uh, studying financial reporting, auditing, and uh, I, I'm on another paper, which I feel that the level of uh, the knowledge which is expected to be imparted to the student, it is actually in part with the masters uh, all around the world, which simply means that we will be expected to, uh, to um, improve ourselves to a particular standard in which we will be able to combat all the fellow uh, challenges which we which we face in our future work life. So I believe the lecturers are well equipped in TUS to help us understand the concepts of particular subject, to have a practical view of, about a particular subject, and uh, which I believe is pretty good. And one more thing is that uh, most of the Indian students or the international students, they are coming to Ireland with the objective of getting a job uh, in Ireland. So I believe, uh, TUS is giving ample opportunities, including uh, especially the, the mock interviews which are conducted, which were really helpful for me. And I believe um, during the mock, mock interview uh, session, one of the HR from RBK has uh, came to this particular interview and the interview was really good. The good thing is that we will get inputs which will help us to improve because uh, in India, the interview process is entirely different. In, in a European country, in Ireland, it is entirely different. So it's all about how we present ourselves in the interview and uh, how we how we like how we react to the questions, how we answer the questions diplomatically. So all those inputs, all those tips and tricks which were shared by the team of TUS was really really helpful for me in when uh, when I cracked my interview for the for the uh, for the job that I'm doing now. So I believe. Um, uh, as a course, the master's in accounting is really good because I started. You'll be back again in a minute. Yeah, I, th I think if maybe disable the camera. Mm, it might help. Hello. Hello. Uh, I look, uh, I'm yeah. <laughs> That's at least level five. 
yeah uh, am i audible now yes we can hear yeah, you now yeah yeah audible very good okay so actually i think uh, all the international students they don't have to think twice before joining to us because i have thought uh, like uh, how i will be able to manage a masters uh, in to us in a different country but the experience which you are which you are going to uh, So it's very positive. Has anyone any questions they would like to ask Anand when he's here? If you want to put it into the chat box, perhaps is a good chance he, may, he should be back. And uh, if there's any question you'd like to ask Anand, or indeed any question you'd like to ask me or Bernard, Bernard Rye at the moment. Yeah. And if there's any hard questions, Carl will answer them. So <laughs> Carl, any accounting <laughs> questions about depreciation or uh, the cost of capital, Carl will, will answer them. <laughs> Look, you're going to you're going to scare them away with all those boring accounting questions. I thought we're great, we're great. We start the boring stuff after they they they, they come to join the course. Now, here's here's Vinu. So if Anand comes back, we'll uh, yeah yeah. Uh, uh, hi hi Luke. Uh, I I just want to uh, share some of the incidents which happened during my masters because. Uh, uh, many of the students, including me, were skeptical whether you know the the project writing experience will be good or bad. So the 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 professor, the the lecturers, all of them were supporting about how we could improve ourselves. They were not being so lenient about that because they will be helping us all about uh, all about in improving our listening skills, uh, improving our writing skills, and all those skills which will equip us to become the future accountants. And one more thing is that uh, which I uh, only found in TUS is that TUS uh, lecturers or the head of the department, they are really, really committed to get us uh, a particular job, a full time job or a training contract in a particular CA firm or a, a technology company or any other company in Ireland. So they are really committed towards getting the future students into the job which I feel most of the other universities are not having that much of commitment. So I believe TUS is really good in that aspect. And uh, regarding the students uh, who are looking forward to become a chartered accountant or a qualified accountant in Ireland, I think the master's in accounting from TUS is the best course that you will get because you will be getting eight exemptions out of 13 papers. And moreover, if you, if you clear the intermediate level of accounting from India, I believe you will be exempted from ta writing tax paper from ECCA. So totally, I got nine papers of exemption and I need only four. I need to qualify only four papers to qualify as a qualified accountant. So I believe that is the major attraction. That is the major advantage of uh, completing or joining this particular master's in Ireland. So I believe I wish all the students who are joining this particular course, they 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 will be happy enough to uh, experience the learning uh, curve, uh, which which will be delivered by the GUS authorities. Thank, thanks very much, Thank Anand. You. And Thank you. I, I, and I, I'll just say that Anand was always in class. Anand missed like no classes, you know, unless they had to do an interview perhaps, or Anand was there every day. He did the work outside of class and he reaped the rewards and he's now working. Yeah. And, uh, if you're going thanks. to come, thanks, and 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 it's a, you're a credit to the the masters to come here and talk so well. Thanks very much for coming, Thank and you. hopefully we'll see you in at Lowen. We might meet up. Uh, yeah, thanks. It's good that you're working local, so we can meet up. We might come to the college someday. Uh, if you're yeah. off, we might. We'll do. So, uh, and that's I'm something very I want to sorry to uh, interrupt in between. I am Ishita from international team, and oh, I would sure. like to extend hi. Um, I would like to extend our uh, you know sincere thanks to Anand because he not only was a like very good student, but he also helped all of the international students last year with accommodation and guiding them. He was very prompt and, uh, you know, he volunteered to help them with accommodation, even uh, with the transactions. Uh, he's been great. He, he's always been a great asset to us. So thank, thanks, Anand. Thanks, Ishtar. Thanks, thanks so much, well. Thank you. Yeah. And 
This is Vinu as well. I don't know if Vinu is here. I don't think she is. I'm not sure. Um, hey, sorry, Luke. And uh, Venu is um, there for Venu is currently working in DM Financials in Limerick, and they are going through a year end. So she sent her apologies, and she couldn't be here today. And uh, she's uh, she's doing well. She's doing really well. Yeah. But that year, uh, she was in the class with Anand, and uh, two, both Venu and Stina, uh, are working in that same company in Limerick and doing really well and there will be opportunities for our other graduates to get jobs in the in where they've worked because they've done so well and that's what we found is that the feedback has been very good some of our international students in particular may have worked in accounting for a number of years and they bring an awful lot and they 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 find getting work easier because they've got such experience that they can talk about so um if i think we have the picture here this could be you soon and that's what we want we really want people to come to commit to coming to class commit to doing the work outside of class the only obstacle i can see for students is potentially is doing too much part-time work so and that can be a problem if students come to ireland and they if they even if they come to class but outside of class if they're working too much it means they're not getting they've no time to do schoolwork outside of class so if, if you're if you're going to come to ireland pay the money if you look at if the fees are here it's a big commitment and i know you have to earn money to live but it's it, sometimes students can be short-sighted and try to to, to work as much part-time and, and and their 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 the masters or the degree performance suffers so that's one thing I'm saying now to, to watch out for that and and commit to doing the work outside of class because then you will pass with the good grades and you will get the job and in, in two three years you'll be that person that's a qualified accountant the world will be your oyster you can stay in Ireland you can move to Europe you can go back home you know it, it, it just really uh, is a chance for everyone and we want to help you with that so if anyone has questions, Bernard, I, Carl, I see Owen is here, we can we can try and answer anything. That you, um, Luke, you might just go back to the tuition fee and just explain that that's the top master's programme, the fees for, yes. for the top master's, yeah. You might just yeah, thanks, Carl. read it out to you. Okay, so the, the 14,500 is for non-EU students and that is for the thought masters, the one year uh, masters and then the fees are different for the, the BA in accounting. And so um, we, we have uh, merit-based scholarships available for all of our international students and it's 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 based on your honours degree uh, grades, so your CGPA or your average percentage, and this will be applied um, after you apply your application. Our international office will apply the merit-based scholarship towards your your uh, conditional offer letter so if you're over 70 percent in your honors degree you will get three thousand which would be reduced from the tuition fee and if it's over 60 to 69 it's two and a half thousand so brings the fee uh, down quite low for a taught masters if you compare it to other universities uh, within ireland and, and and especially with uk comparisons australia canada as well the estimated cost of living in Athlone and Limerick campus. So um, today, Luke and Bernard are, are, are speaking about the, the program offerings at undergraduate level and, and taught masters in Athlone. But we also have an honours degree in accounting and finance on our Limerick campus as well. But on both campuses, Athlone and Limerick, the cost of living is the same. We estimate it's 10,000 euro per year, including accommodation. This includes all your food and, and, and everything else. So that's quite on the high side. We, we used to say it was seven to eight, but the cost of living accommodation has, has gone up. So we and for the Irish visa, if you need to apply for a student visa, they need to see a minimum of 10,000 per year. So it's 10,000 per year, including accommodation. And we're very lucky. Uh, most of our students, I see a lot of attendees here today, some students that I see some have applied already, guys, Luke and Bernard, you might recognize some of the names and um, you're doing everything really early, which is fantastic. And this means that if you've applied, you've paid your deposit, you know you're coming to TUS, 
and as soon as you can book your accommodation. So in the next week or two, some of the accommodation providers locally will be opening up and will be accepting bookings for September 2023. So that's one thing that I say is apply early for your accommodation and you will get very good accommodation within walking distance, you know, two to 10 minutes on average. The later you leave it, if you leave it till the summer or the late summer or until you get your visa, there's less options and then you might have to have a, a longer commute and it mightn't be as convenient for you. But last year we're very lucky both in Athlone and Limerick, all of our international students were housed within walking distance or a, a, a very short bus journey to our campus. And the likes of Anand, um, as Ishta alluded to in, when she, she was thanking him, was great. We had, a, we had a team of ambassadors, international student ambassadors, which helped our, our, our new students with settling in with all of these type of things. So that's something that we do very well in TUS. We have a very personalised approach. You see how uh, friendly Luke and, and Bernard are uh, as the lecturers and, and how in touch they are with, with the students both during their academic journey and afterwards. And that's something that we, we really prize ourselves on. The application process you see here, it's very straightforward. We have a new online application system um, and we, we hope to get within five to 10 working days um, you should get an offer. We, we say 10 to 14, but it's typically between five to 10 working days that you'd, you'd get your conditional offer letter. I always encourage students, and I see some agents here today, apply early. If you're missing an English uh, exam or you're missing your final transcript or something, you can still apply to TUS and we can issue conditional offer letters subject to finishing your English or subject to finishing um, you know, your honours degree if you're in your SEM 8 or whatever. So that's something that we, we, we look for as well. So it's an online application system. If you have any questions, please turn on your microphone, your camera and ask Bernard and Luke now um, or myself. Myself, I'm joined here by my colleagues Owen Kiveney, who uh, is based not on campus and also Ishta Singh, um, who is based in India. And I think I, I see some others. I think Karen was on earlier. I see Karen there um, who's based in Limerick. So please ask us any questions. If you're very shy, you can type in some questions into the chat box, please. I might ask a question there to get the ball rolling. Um, okay. Is there anything the students can do between now and September to help prepare themselves for the program? Thanks, Owen. That's a good question. And what we do is in towards the end of June, we will send out a, a pack. So once we, for the students that have been accepted, got their letter, we can send out a pre-reading pack for students that they can look at resources before they come so that they're they're up to speed in in september for the modules in semester one that's i suppose that's the, on the academic side i think that's what we would view as the main thing that they can do and are you thinking of anything else as a uh, no yeah uh, that's good advice and i suppose it's for for the students joining the master's program you have a couple of days and then really you have to hit the ground running don't you so it's, it's yes, important to to get up to speed uh, before they start classes. Some might be coming out of a degree and they're in study mode. Some might be coming from a couple of years work experience. So it, it's important to kind of be prepared to, to it, it's 13 weeks of study to your exams. So it, it's important to be be ready to. It is, and they, yeah. because they, when they join, they have so much to do in terms, well, they've got, even they have their accommodation sorted, but it's it's quite a, culture shock i suppose and there's yeah. a lot uh, and so you you won't really i think the first week you'll be just learning the the ropes you want a time to be studying I imagine and you'll be just settling in so it would help to have done that pre-reading prior to coming and we, yeah. we will send people like that and, yeah, yeah, and it might be a bit of a shock to the system but that's totally normal it happens to all students every year and then once they get settled in um, and and they find their flow uh they can get through it and end up like our friend here with a great job in Ireland and yeah. having a good experience. That's that's an excellent question, Owen. Um, and, and it's one we, we get um, quite commonly from our 
international students going into masters. So it's something that we can provide and, and it gives them, as we said, a little head start. Um, just another, we have a very good question here from Gokul and Rita Narang and hi Rita <laughs> and Gokul. Um, the IELTS score. So at undergraduate level, if you're coming into year one for our honours degree, we look for a minimum of IELTS 6.0. Um, or equivalent. So we do accept the Duolingo English language test. We accept TOEFL and many others. OK, and um, for masters, it's uh, IELTS 6.5 with no band less than six. So a lot of our international students here will have no issue with, with the with the English language. And um, there's another question. Is there an age bar? We, we don't have a, an age bar on, on our applications. It's once you have the academic requirements. So if you have an honours degree, um, um, in accounting or a related discipline and you're over 60% CGPA or, or, or your grade point average, we can accept you into our, our masters. But sometimes if a student um, might have a gap or they might have a, a lower uh, CGPA, we can um, offer and provide interviews and we, we'll interview the student and, and that would be done by Luke or Bernard as well. So um, very good questions there. Thank you on, on the English. Kind of, I'm not sure if they're referring to the the upper or the, the lower limit of the age. So sometimes you do get applications coming in from a 16 year old and they will have problems getting a visa. Oh, yeah, they will yeah. need a, yeah. a guardian. Um, isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's no upper yeah. age limit, but if, if they're 16 or 17, sometimes they when they're applying for their visa, they need a guardian. Now, sometimes they yeah. might have a, a relation in the country. But if not, there are companies that will provide that service of being their, their guardian, but they, it obviously costs um, extra money. Yeah, I, I it, just, it's yeah, very sorry, uncommon Carl. owned though. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry, Carl there. Just want to mention that I encourage everyone, if you're interested, apply early, apply early, apply the master or apply the BA BA program early this year we saw huge increase in demand in this master program myself and Luke have came across a lot of a lot of like early applications and uh, so make sure secure a place yourself if you're considering this and we can see that uh, the demand for this master program kind of go in the same in the same way as the demand for for qualified accountants on the job market there's a huge increase huge demand boost lately uh, on the job market and we can see locally within Ireland and international as well there's a lot of demand for this course apply early yeah, that that's that's a very good point, Bernard, and and we 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 encourage all of our students to apply early for for a lot of our top masters, but especially the accounting, because the, as Luke um, alluded to in his presentation, it's a very small class size. You're not going to be in with 50, 60 students in the in in the in the class. So, um, there's a limited number of seats available, and we're seeing a huge increase in in demand for uh, masters in accounting the last number of years because of uh, as Bernard said the. The, the jobs and there's a lot of jobs domestically, both in the Midlands and Midwest regions of Ireland, but also nationally. We, as we said, we've we've some of our students working in Dublin and other mm -hmm. cities as well. Um, Luke, you've something to add there? Yeah, no, I I just I'd agree with both of you, and uh, like it's been very positive experience for us as lecturers as the numbers from our international partners uh, have increased in the and they really add a lot to the class you know it's been great some of the especially some of the students that have worked so we we'd have students that would on the masters in accounting that would have done their degree a number of years ago but we would have worked in accounting and finance roles and they they bring a lot to the question to the, the because they've experienced a lot of the things that we're, we're studying and they can talk about it and add things uh, so like it's it's really we we welcome students that are just coming from their degree and also students that may have studied a number of years ago if they've if they've worked in accounting and finance and uh, that's it so really look forward to seeing as many of you in the flesh and in person to person uh, next next September and if there's any other questions there. 
Uh, look, I have a question. This is on behalf of a couple of students in India. So we have this degree BCom, um, where you know uh, we have BCom in finance, that is Bachelor's of Commerce in Finance or Accounting, which we are accepting into our masters. There, but there are a couple of students who are interested into accounting, and they are freshers, uh, you know, straight away coming from Bachelor of Commerce degree. What if they take a month or three months course in India online for any accounting and uh, can they apply for Master of Arts in Accounting or do we give them a higher diploma option? So they'll have done their Bachelor of um, Commerce and uh, should he, they, would, they should be able to apply because they've, if they, if they've, as long as they've done, there they will be core accounting subjects that they've covered in their degree. So, and they achieved the, the 2 2 grade point average. I don't see any issue. Yeah, uh, we, 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 we we'd have like to, them, but yeah. yeah. We'd have to check no, that. Uh, is, uh, yeah. yeah, no, sometimes they don't have a lot of accounting subjects. That's when that's what I'm talking about, that it might be a normal B, uh, Bachelor of Commerce degree, but not a lot of accounting subjects. But a student is interested to get into accounting. So for such mm. students, what's the option we can provide if they are ready to take up a course? Meanwhile, they come to Ireland or uh, do we provide them a higher diploma option? For a higher accounting? diploma option in Limerick is the. Um, yeah, OK, yeah, so, so if you. they don't have any, it's basically Luke, they don't have any accountancy modules or taxation or anything in their degree. Can they go into okay. the masters directly? Is that's the question? Yeah. Yeah, no, we would we would we would expect them to have done, uh, fin, you know, accounting modules, uh, financial management modules, management accounting, uh, like the core ones are the financial accounting, management accounting, financial management, and then there may be tax or audit, but they 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 sometimes we don't mind if if they haven't done tax or audit. It's more so that that they've got a good grounding in financial accounting, management accounting, and the, the financial management, because that covers a lot. And if they hadn't, we would be, uh, we wouldn't let them into the masters. As you say, Carol, it would be the, the higher diploma option uh, in Limerick would be a good, good, good stepping stone. Yeah. Sure. So, so it, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so I even, think An Anand has his, his hand up there very politely. Hi, <laughs> Carol. <laughs> Uh, I forgot to add one more point because I believe uh, most of the international students they might be worried about how they will be able to apply for the exam uh, for the for the employment like the full time job offer. Uh, so I have an answer for that. I think they can apply through LinkedIn, uh, Jobs.ie, Indeed.ie. So many websites are there which will help them land into the perfect job that they want. And I believe most of the uh, most of the chartered accountants firm in which we uh, the seniors of the uh, in this particular course which we work with uh, when there's a new opening in this particular firm or a company they will be asking the current employees to nominate the uh, or or to get the referrals from the prospective employees so i believe uh, uh, we the seniors will be really really uh, able to help you guys out uh, refer you to the to, to, to the interview process Thanks, yeah. Anand. Yes, and, and we'd find that that we think that as as, as like your the next round next year, your company Alchemy will be looking for for graduates. Yes, yes. And yeah. You, you've had such a positive experience there. They'll like, you'll be able to say they'll be they'll be looking for more graduates from from TUS and from the masters in accounting. You know, so it, yes, it's yes, a, yes. It's a it's a virtuous circle for us and for the students. Yeah. We'll, yeah. As you do That's well. It's a great, it's a great point, Anne, and uh, and uh, we've seen it the last number of years, the huge increase in use of LinkedIn. Um, I think LinkedIn has been, you know, if, if you interview our graduates and where they're working now, LinkedIn has has been very important part of the process for them. So that's something, whether you're coming into year one as an undergraduate or if you're uh, looking to join the masters, just start working on on your LinkedIn profile. Um, and be conscious of what you're putting up on social media because everything is traced. Now employers do background searches <laughs> when they're um, employing individuals. But just to let you know in TUS as well, um, both in Athlone and Limerick, we've dedicated career guidance counsellors 
um, which are fantastic. They do uh, one on one sessions for uh, LinkedIn training, for interview skills, for your CV prep. And also in Athlone and Limerick this year, we had our largest ever careers fair where we'd over 100 local companies and, 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 and actually national companies that come here to our campus and they're directly recruiting. Um, you haven't even finished your degree or your master's and there's companies coming here um, to uh, get the best talent. And you'll see, you, Luke and, and, and Bernard might let you know about the links that they have with accountancy firms. I know some of them do come into the classrooms to, to pitch for graduate programs and things like that. So we do, we do, we understand it's, you know, very challenging and very worrying for you. Can you guarantee a job after graduation? We can't, but what we have here in TUS is all the very good policies with the good structure to to assist you and, and to enable you to to graduate with a good honours degree or a good master's, but then also to have that opportunity to work in Ireland after you graduate. Yeah, that's it. The, the, it, it is in your hands in that if you graduate with a good degree or a good master's grade and you'll have done the mock interviews with us you'll have you you, you have a very yeah. high chance of getting a job you know there's accounting is on the critical skills list uh, in ireland there's a lot big demand for accountants at the moment so it's it's as i said it's a good time there's a there's a question there about is it's not the same kind of question which uh, bba and llb is that law carl uh, yeah so like that like we, we'd have to look at that um it has to be equivalent to a, an honors degree on 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 narik level eight so I, I know um, you, you might career overseas, you might discuss that with um, with Ishtev afterwards if you have um, a, a student with that background. The second question there would be related to the bonds for living expenses. <laughs> that's a question you'd need to, to direct at the visa office. Um, that's just in, in terms of the proof of funds, uh, Luke. So that's something yeah. that we, we we're not really involved in but we, you would need to discuss that directly with the, the visa office um, in um, in India. And on the first question, it comes back to did, did the, the, the accounting, cover, <laughs> yeah. cover the accounting, you know, yeah. it's, if it's mostly low, if there isn't much accounting, financial management, management accounting, then it, it would be setting students, if we accepted a student, would be setting up to fail. We don't want, because the, the, the step up would be too much. You need to have a good core of accounting of the core skills. That's what we don't want to bring students in and then them not to not to have a chance of doing well. So that's that's why we, we require those uh, core accounting skills. Thanks. Ishtev. I think that's all the questions, Carol, is it? Yeah. yeah, I think we've covered every question. Anyone else have something to, to add or I think I should just put down um, if you have any questions after this, guys, we have international at tus.e email. You can you can contact that. But if you're uh, based from in India or neighboring country, Ishida has our details there for you um, on on the website. But the best way probably would be to email international at tus.e um, if you're outside of, of that country. So um, I'd like to personally thank um, all the attendees for joining. So taking your time out um, of your busy morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you're from. <laughs> um, I know the time zones are different uh, around the world, but um, thanks to Luke and Bernard for um, preparing, putting all the effort and time into preparing today's uh, presentation and webinar and taking your time out of your busy schedule. And a special word of thanks, I think, to Anand um for coming on i i don't know if he was on his lunch break or an early break from work uh, but to join us uh for uh today's session so thanks to everyone and we we will share the recording with with everyone afterwards uh, maybe um sometime next week and just to add thanks. cal uh, i suppose the takeaway if you're on the fence about whether to to join the master's program um it's important to get your application in as uh, the place